Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London. I've had a book sent to me, which I didn't uh, know much about, uh, from Paul Patterson. It's this book here, and I'll talk about it in a minute. It's called The Great Council Tax Recovery Scam, Approved by Magistrates and Judges. Interesting title in its own way. It's got a subtitle, How to Challenge the Council's Fraudulent Costs. It means fraudulent cost regime. Paul's published it himself. He's a known author. He's published other books in the past. And this came to my attention because um, I have been involved in actually making some fairly substantial observations about the costs regime, which is sometimes um, adopted and approached by local authorities who wish to recover their costs. And it is a well-known problem going to start naming names but it's a problem where quite often some local authorities and some solicitors will overcharge on a very substantial uh, scale for the costs they have incurred. Costs is an emotive issue at the best of times because it's discretionary. It should follow the event but it can sometimes not follow the event, the event depending on the behaviour of the parties but it is discretionary at the behest of the judge. Now, I've given this the title for this paperback, very sad reading for a freedom of speech matter involving the vexed subject of costs. Let's look at the book because it's self-published. There it is. It's a spine and then there's some blurb on the back. Basically, he's basically saying that because of the moratorium at the moment, uh, what is going to happen in the future about costs in cases involving the non-payment of council tax. The book runs to 130, 140 pages. The front of the book is uh, that page there. And then you've got contents. You've got uh, 10 main chapters, um, basically going through the various bits of the process. And he's naming specific councils. I'm going to be very careful about what I say because I don't want to defame anybody. He has an introduction. He's sailing very close to the wind, in my view, with this book, uh, but he is setting out what's happened to him and other people that he knows about. He starts off with the summons that you get, um, and he talks about the old poll tax, um, which was ended in 1991, and, and the new regime that we've, we've got that came in. He talks a little bit about, <coughs> about the history, and then he goes into a lot of detail, including some of the... Um, problems that he has uh, faced. Um, I wouldn't call this a whinge. I would say that he's making some interesting points and there is in fact a very substantial judgment uh, given um, in here before his honour Judge Rochford at Milton Keynes. I imagine this is um, a public document. I'm taking it that all the documents that are published here are public documents and they're allowed to be published. I didn't see any privacy marking. But what I have got here is a book by way of a 130 odd page paperback which is saying how to challenge the council's fraudulent costs. He's using um, an emotional word fraudulent and you've got to be careful about that because costs the cost regime itself is something that is decided by a judge and or judges and to use the word fraud um, could be slightly misconstrued by some people who may have a slightly different view of um, the way in which one goes about things. Let me tell you a bit about Paul and the book uh, and what I think about where we are at the moment because I'm not trying to come down on any particular side but I am actually pointing a mark, putting a marker down because at some stage a lot of cases are going to come back to court for liability orders concerning non-payment of council tax and we are going to have chaos and I think we should be aware of it because this book is actually indicating to people <laughs> what you can do to try and challenge sometimes behaviour by a local authority that isn't quite the way what we think it should be. I would, I have to say as an ex uh, councillor twice, I would like to see more local elected members being involved in trying to deal and diffuse some of these council tax problems. My experience has been that they haven't bothered and they're not in the least bit interested because they're terrified of the financial organisations within the local authorities themselves. And perhaps I'm wrong, but I don't know.
but I do think there's a problem. So what we say here, I say this, that Patterson has undeniable courage in producing his personal critical survey on what he calls a cost scam involving council tax recovery processes. He's an angry man and his anger is about the concept of the award of costs which are at the discretion of the court in its final decision making. As I've said generally, costs follow the event but they've got to be reasonable and again there is that problem again of, of the reasonableness approach. There are different words you can use but it is about the test of what is reasonable and fair, fair and just. Because there are always two sides of course to, or if not more, to a story. And costs of course is emotional as is a judgment itself, especially when you lose. And in these cases you're talking about effectively strict liability so you owe the money and then you get hit with a much larger sum of money for costs which are sometimes out of all proportion with great respect to what has actually been done in the way of the work and it's punitive and it's revenue raising by a local authority. Those are allegations, I'm not saying whether they're true or not so your legal department will be happy if I'm not actually naming names or anything else but I'm making those points that that is what is perceived to be the case because sadly <clears throat> the way in which council tax payments are obtained from local uh, the local electorate does remain an area of concern for many and that goes back to 1275 with the initial poll tax conflict at that time reignited with the modern we had the poll tax problems we had riots then we've now got the council tax and again, we have uh, the build-up, I think, of major problems if we're not careful. Because in an earlier book, Paul Patterson had a forum, his stock forum, called My Council Tax Stance, which was published in October 27. And he wrote, this all started in January 2016, when my son Jay started to tell me how the council were investing in arms companies. If that wasn't immoral enough... It became apparent that the council are deceiving people who've fallen into arrears with their council tax. They're deceiving them in the summons they are sending out to them. Now, you've got to look at all that because clearly he's coming to it from the point of view about what the money is being spent on. You can't do anything about that because it's, a, it's an act of parliament and we obey the rule of law. What he's talking about, he says, deceiving them in the summons that they're sending out. In other words, He's talking about the processes that the council go to get the money back. There are all these thousands of, of claims that they're making for orders. And they're basically saying, you don't need to turn up in court. We'll deal with it all. And the next thing you know, you've been stabbed in the back and you've got this massive amount of money. And that's why I think he's whinging to a certain extent. The trouble is, I have no reason to doubt that what he says is true. And that means that the processes themselves should be reviewed. Now what he does is he continues in the original book, and this is really an extension of this, by saying that summons is nothing more than an invitation to the council's place of business, a room in the magistrate's court, nothing to do with the magistrates, just a way of putting fear into them. Hundreds of people all summoned to appear saying he gives an example of one court, <clears throat> and I'm going to mention it Bodmin Magistrates Court because that's where he lives on a Friday afternoon at 1.20 and then obviously with the new paper, with this new paperback what Paul has done is he's expanded the original points to cover the problems we now have with the pandemic and he's showing how the process as he sees it operates now there will be another view by local um, council officials and by the courts themselves about the problem. We'll get onto that in one moment because what Paul then does here, and he did it before as he sets the scene, saying that the <clears throat> council officer will be waiting to usher you into your place, into their place of business, get you into agreeing to pay by instalment, and then that way accepting liability without even seeing a magistrate. In other words, you're effectively pleading guilty. Um, bearing in mind this is actually criminal. Forget what you anything else it is a criminal court that we're talking about here but you get a liability order um, then you get the position of the following information is purely based again on Paul's experiences over the last 12 months that he had when he wrote the original book and he says anyone wishing to use the following information that includes the stuff here does so in the full knowledge that they took 
they take full responsibility for their own actions. And I'm going to make that point and I'll repeat it. Make sure you get professional legal advice. Uh, don't just rely on people saying things. I know it costs money, but frankly, you are dealing with the state and you've got to be very careful because the state has got a huge amount of power. There's then a plea which Paul makes, say, I ask readers to not believe what they read until they do their own research. Sensible point. I'm entitled to do that. Research all the links and use all or any of the information that follows, um, which implies a reader's acceptance of this disclaimer. In other words, don't take face on face value some of the information you are being given because it may be wrong. And one of the difficulties I have found with the cases I've seen in court has been a complete breakdown in communication between the, the official and the defendant. And the behaviour quite often in court has not been very good on behalf of the official. And in many of the cases I've seen, the judiciary are not necessarily on, on fully in favour of what a local authority has done because they are meant to be reflective as magistrates of what is their local community. And of course, in the original book, Patterson offers advice to many of the sort of letters he cites that can be used as templates for own council tax stance. <clears throat> Obviously, there's further advice here. Then he comes back on the attack with this particular book because he's updated his original work, in my view, setting out how a defendant might challenge costs in a practical way. There's an analogy here, of course, of the non-payment of the licence fee. That's for the, what is called, erroneously, of course, the BBC licence fee, because it's actually the licence fee, but the money goes to the BBC. Where, and obviously it's a home office matter, but it's where those opposed to the payment of such fees, one of course is Lord Moore, who is one of the probably the most well-known, were encouraged en masse to make, make up a challenge and clog up the court system. Paul seems to be doing that, and I think he's got to be a bit careful there, because at the end of the day, it's up to individual people. And the vast bulk of the people who are um, summonsed for uh, non-payment of a licence fee or the council tax um, are not going to do anything about it, because the vast bulk are apathetic, about, and, and actually they've got no money anyway. And of course, that is one of the problems, because it does clog up, clog up the system very dramatically because it's the sheer numbers of defendants in both the license fee cases and in this instance the council fee cases um, which are actually are going to cause concern in the future because of the moratorium because the court and the Johnson government since 2019 have remained concerned at the numbers and at the chaos. Obviously with the pandemic it's caused even more difficulty Bulk listing liability orders are the problem. They always have been, in my view, and it would be impertinent, probably, in, as civil servants would see it, for me to comment on that. But I think it's worth making an observation that the way that the bulk listing liability orders occur means that there can be a lot of errors. And it doesn't really fall in line with the general way in which the procedurals are meant to operate. And I have a concern about that, which I think should be looked at in the future. Because this matter of concern with both council tax and, for instance, with other civil proceedings, is where the allegation is that the claimant receives preferential treatment, that in this case is a local authority, at the... Um, in, in favour of, of their um, case um, because and their cause of action whilst the defendant is actually put in a vulnerable position because what then happens to make it the worst of, the, of all outcomes is the inflated costs which are sought against many people who are actually poor and vulnerable. That's where the problem is. Now, obviously, um, it's the classic difficulty that I came across with um, the cases I saw concerning licence fees not being paid, and that it's not going to being sent to prison for non-payment of a licence fee, it's going to prison for not paying the amounts of money that arise from that, including the costs. And we go back to things like unit costs and uh, all sorts of other problems that we had over the decades. 
uh, which have made this a whole area of very substantial dissatisfaction for many members of the public. And therefore, there's only one conclusion that I can actually draw from this book. This book is interesting. Um, he's not going to make any friends and influence anybody uh, by producing it. But we need urgent reform in this area because we are going to have a problem. Um, it's all very well having moratoria on um, the problems of repossessions and the problems of council tax uh, collections and all the other things. But the day of judgment is going to come and it's going to be very serious because it's going to cause chaos, especially if most of the people who are hauled into the courts are unemployed because the economy is in a very serious a predicament. And that is where the problem is because there are these much bigger issues which are actually behind this book and that's about the extent of the powers of local government officials who often are considered by some, and I'm not naming any names, I'm just making that observation that they over egg the costs they seek by doubling the sums of money for the work done because they're saying oh well we had to do this extra work and the judge will say, no, you, that's what you get paid for anyway. So why are you claiming it twice? I mean, I've had that. That has occurred on quite a few occasions in some of the, the um, cases I've been involved in. And I have to say the judges, if, if it is brought to their attention, will, generally speaking, identify whether in fact the costs are outrageously out of order. I mean, some costs applications are ridiculous. They are an affront frankly, to the way in which justice should be administered. Now, the problem is that most people won't know about any of this because although the courts are open, you don't see any of it. If they were filmed, it would be slightly different. But of course, at the moment, it's very difficult to get a lot of the information out. Sadly, then, it remains the position that costs so often outstrip any sums of money sought or what orders you get, say, for the dispute that you are trying to have resolved. And it does make, frankly, an, a mockery of what we call open justice to a certain extent, because the difficulty is that there are people milking the system. And I've seen it, and I know who they are, and they know I know who they are, because I've made the points in court. But I do think it's an important point to bear in mind, because the difficulty we have is that going to law is the preserve of the rich, except, of course, the problems which the council taxpayer will face. Now, let me conclude with these words that say it's clear to me that the book, this one, will be highly unpopular with many officials, and it, because it doesn't aim to replace professional legal advice. And I've said, and I will repeat, that you should always seek professional help legal advice and assistance in dealing with a local authority because they have a huge organisation behind them. They have the state behind them and therefore you've got to know what you're doing. It's feared therefore by me and I think many others that the only real solution is a root and branch reform which will bring post-Covid, which will obviously bring the post-Covid chaos which we've got to the um, justice system. Once the tax arrears and the cost claims are uh, looked at by the courts, it will obviously uh, cause us a really serious problem for the future. It hasn't even been thought of yet, but when it does, uh, we will have a problem. And it's going to be a lot of people. We're not talking of a few people here. We're talking of a very large number of people who've probably already fallen into arrears and they could find themselves with very, very high costs. And sometimes their costs will be way beyond any scale which is reasonable. And that's where the problem is. So, Paul, you're very brave to take these people on. Um, it, it is an interesting book. I'm grateful that you sent it to me for me to have a look at. Um, bear in mind that uh, it is not the answer, though, to any individual problem. You need to go and see a lawyer. The date of publication of this paperback is cited as, a, as at October. I'll just show it again very briefly. There's the front, a little spine on the back, and then there's um, some blurb. Then you can see, obviously, some pictures on the front. Uh, let me just show you uh, some of the information. This is a chapter, chapter 9, on uh, Barnet Borough Council. 
I am mentioning a couple of names. I'm not going into any detail in case any of this information is for any reason uh, wrong. But I think what we've got here from what I've been through uh, with this book, um, it does try to set out um, how uh, the procedure should actually work, whether it does work or whether it doesn't work. Um, is, is going to be a problem. I have to say as a final point that I question whether the people who are administering this in the court service understand themselves what they're doing. And I think that is where I have my biggest concern because I still believe that the concept of the council tax is actually, it's, it's with us at the moment, but I do not see how it can survive if it's going to continually go up and up and up each year with these severe sanctions that people have. Because at some stage you'll have to draw a line and say, well, there are plenty of people who can pay it, but there are a very large number who can't. So, Paul, thank you very much for sending me the book. It doesn't really answer very much, but I think for those people who have seen the um, work of the Child Poverty Action Group, they will be aware that there are a number of organisations that can help. Uh, and I hope that this book will, will help one or two people, but do get professional legal advice. Thank you, Paul. Bye-bye.